And uh, let me see here. Let me record. Wait a minute. Oh, here. Go live. All right. Hold on a second, folks. I'm going. Oh, it's not going live. You do not have permission to live stream. Oh, that's good. That's interesting. Uh, let me uh, let me just close that down. Uh, hold on a second. This this happened last week too, and I don't understand why. Copy. Okay, I get rid of that. Okay, then we go over here to Facebook live on Facebook. Okay, and uh, is it there? Okay. Uh, let me see here. Control V. No, that's not it at all. Oh boy. Hold on a second, folks. Uh, uh, Alex Bennett's. I uh, see. I mean, I hmm. pop up, up, and then it's this is the uh, this is the uh, what? This is the eleventh month, and this is the fourteenth day, and this is two thousand twenty-two. Now let's see what happens if I go live. Oh, come here. Come here. Come on. Go live. There we go. See? Now it's going live. I I I am I'm amazed that things work and don't work and whatever. But anyway. Okay, we're live now on uh, on uh, on Facebook. Okay. All right. Ah, hello everybody on Facebook. Meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. Okay, I get that. I get that. So why isn't it? Uh, why is this suddenly saying? Oh, there we go. All right, <laughs> I give up. You know, it's just amazing how fast these things uh, turn on me. Uh, but well, let's admit everybody. All righty. Okay, this is not my day, folks. Not my day. Mandy O'Brien, Charlene is there. Uh, let me see here. Uh, we got Edward Berger. We got Charlie That's Wallace. Right. We got Len LaFrisco. Um, we got uh, uh, Vernon. Uh, and, uh, uh, of course, Paul Levin and Andrew Dor Hello, Andrew. Good to see you. And Mandy is trying to sign on here. I thought we would have very few people today because Shecky's not going to be able to make it because he had a doctor's appointment. And um, let me see here. And Mike Chisholm is not going to make it because he's on a plane. So, but uh, he's not here. I'm out, nice I'm of people here. to let me know they're not going to be here. <laughs> anyway, let me turn up the audio here. Are you all there, everybody? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. There they go. Okay. Sorry for the delay, folks, in starting here, but I went and I clicked everything, and then it said, you don't have permission to go on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Marjorie? That seems about Marjorie's right. trying to order Chinese food. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be with us as soon as she's ordered the Chinese food. We always ordered from this place called Ollie's, and and we always ordered from them. And uh, all of a sudden, they don't uh, deliver. Now, what Chinese <laughs> restaurant doesn't deliver? Okay. So they don't deliver, but you can use Uber Eats. Well, I don't want to use Uber Eats. I don't want to use Uber. I don't like Uber. Uber can go screw themselves. So anyway, she's trying to get us Chinese food for dinner. So, well, anyway, how's everything down in Georgia, Mandy? God, you got you you had all kinds of things going on down there. Like what? No, <laughs> <laughs> Are you, as they say, friggin' kill? Uh, well, I know. I you think that the votes? Well, I mean, I guess they've been counted, but yeah, we have to run off. If you're mm -hmm. talking about politics, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The big show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's Seraphin. Hello, Seraphin. We haven't seen you in a while either. So good to see you. Anyway, so down in, uh, yeah, you're you're in a runoff now. You know, I I was saying the other night on the nighttime show that I was so sorry for you. And the reason I'm sorry for you is that you have to put up with more of this bullshit. Well, the one that I really couldn't believe was Marjorie Taylor Greene. 
I couldn't believe that she won again. It's really sad. But well, but that's in an area where they're nuts up there, aren't they? Well, it's um, uh, yeah. How well did she win by? Was it was it a runaway? It, she won, and she was running. The person that ran against her was a veteran. That's what I couldn't understand. Oh. He was like a very veteran, um, but not not good enough. <laughs> So so when I lived, when yeah. I lived in when I lived in Georgia, I was the next district over from there. Mm-hmm. And if you didn't have an R next to your name, there's no way you could win in that. So if nobody right. primaried her, there was right. no way if you were if you were Superman with a D next to your name, with exactly. the best the ability to bring a million jobs to the to the county, they wouldn't right. vote for you. How about try Jesus Christ? <laughs> <laughs> no thanks. I don't, I've, 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 I don't think I'm going to try that. No. Would Jesus Christ have had an R next to his name? No. Mm-hmm. No, no, I don't. I thought, think. I thought it was H, Jesus H Christ. Uh, <laughs> so the H is for the H is for Herschel. It's Jesus. Herschel, Herschel I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's. That, uh, but that you know, this whole runoff thing. You know, I mean, you're sick yeah. enough as it is of all the ads, right, on television. Yeah. I'm trying Tonight. to. Just- Dream, so I'm not hopefully watching any broadcast television. But even on some of like Hulu shows, I'll get the, you know, the p- political ads. Ugh. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, to answer your question, she won decisively, two thirds to one third, pretty much. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's just the part of the state it's in. Yeah. yeah. But uh, still, really, nobody went against her in the primary. Come on, like. Yeah. That's just sad that they want somebody that's, she's not going to do any work. She's not going to get any policy work done. You know, she just wants to run her mouth, you know. Well, she's in it for the ego. Right. Just like several other politicians we know who will remain unsaid. Uh, I I was feeling sorry for you because, gee, you know, you figure "Ah, it's election day. uh, It's all over. Now I don't have to watch these goddamn ads every other minute on television. And all of a sudden, it's a runoff. Now, I find runoffs wrong. Yeah. Because runoffs are not the same as the actual election. The actual election, everybody's juiced up. Everybody goes out and votes. Everybody waits in line to vote. They mail in their votes. They do whatever. But for a runoff, they go to hell with it. I'm not going to show up. That's what they're I'm just hoping it goes the same way as last time. Yeah. But think about think about the data. So the governor of, of Georgia won handedly. And if you look at the number of votes that voted for him totally compared yeah. to how many voted in the in the Senate side, it wasn't that the people who voted for Kemp voted for Warnock. It was that they just chose not to vote for right. that candidate. I'm wondering, I asked Walker. this the other day, and again, you know, we don't get terribly political on this show, but I was asking this the other day on the other show. Uh, uh, what happens if, for instance, I go into a voting booth, and I, I didn't like our governor, all right? And I didn't obviously did not like the Republican who was running. What if I just don't X that, you know, or check? Well, that's, that's what happened. Yeah. That's exactly what that's happened fun. in Georgia. The number of people who voted for senator was something like, I don't have the data in front of me, but it was something like 20 percent less than the total number of voters. OK, so but still, yeah. instead of still, the votes got counted. Oh, for sure. Well, you vote know, for what what happens? Counted. What happens in New it York? It doesn't invalidate your ballot. To it not does not invalidate candidate. your ballot. You don't have to no. vote for every candidate, every every office. You can vote for whatever you want to vote for. You can go ahead and vote for just governor and the rest of them leave them blank and you're fine. Well, they say if I didn't vote for governor, then I wasn't, then I, then I was still voting, you know. Yeah, yeah, you you have a choice to make. You can vote for either of the candidates because you liked one of them or you didn't like one of them, or you can choose to not vote for either. Yeah, but I don't have to right recognize vote. that when you don't vote for, if there's a, a reprehensible and an idiot, you have to decide, do I want to Prevent the reprehensible in place of the idiot. Okay, but what if I check both people who are running? Then you invalidate just that one vote. What vote? Just that one vote. Which vote? For that candidate, it doesn't count. Everything else on your ballot counts. No, but I I, I check, like, you know, Zeldin or whatever his name was here, and I check uh, uh, our our governor, Hochul. Yeah. uh, And and let's say I, I check both of them. 
What happens? Uh, uh, that one, uh, that one uh, category on your ballot becomes invalid, doesn't get counted. Our former yeah, that's why I write in. Yeah. I write in Edward Berger every time. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my two votes. <laughs> yeah. Our former, our former Twitter user Vernon. Uh, what Twitter we, we actually, we actually have a a uh, Kentucky has a state elected office in every county called constable, in addition to sheriff, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And on our ballot, I wrote in my daughter's name. Nice. <laughs> what is the constable as opposed to a sheriff? I have no idea. Well, you're Mr. <laughs> Political. Come on, you should know. If, and if you don't know, nobody knows. Why do we still have a county judge in Jefferson County when they merged city and county uh, the city and the county merged into the, the whole thing. We have a merged government now that yeah. includes all of Jefferson County. So yeah. why do we still have a county uh, attorney who is supposed to be the executive of Jefferson County? They have no power in Jefferson County anymore. There used to be three commissioners and the Jefferson County attorney. That's where Mitch McConnell came from. He was the Jefferson County attorney before he became senator. We have a job here in New York City called, what is it, Advocate? Something mm -hmm. like that, right? Am I right, Edward? Do you know right, that? Right, right. It's a public advocate. Public advocate. What does the public advocate do? He advocates, <laughs> advocates I guess, for the public. Right. <laughs> but why is that? What What is that job? I don't really know, but... <laughs> See, I mean, come on. I don't know. Yeah. That's kind of bad. Hmm? That is kind of bad. You know, I mean, you don't know. Yeah, yeah. But uh uh I <laughs> did anybody I was did anybody I was gonna run for county provocateur, but it was they wouldn't let me run. <laughs> yeah. Did you did, did anybody watch Saturday Night Live this week? Yes. You, yes. Now you had, uh, and you did too, Vernon. You say, yeah. Yep. Uh, the uh, the the guest host was uh, what's his name, uh, Dave. Chappelle, Dave Chappelle, who I thought did a brilliant set. 100%. Okay. Very uh, But I knew he was going to get in trouble. And today I I open up the whatever I think maybe it was Drudge or somebody like that. And uh, the head of the JDL, the Jewish Defense League, assailed him for that set. And I just knew he was going to get in trouble. Oh, hey, here comes Shecky. Okay. Uh, I just knew he was going to get into trouble uh, because somebody was going to complain about this. And I went, I, I laughed. I thought it was terrific. You know, I, I didn't think it was terrific, but I thought for the most part, it was funny. Yeah, I thought it, I thought know, it was that, hilarious. Yeah, yeah, I thought I thought he hit the mark. And, and let me just say, there are lots of Jews in Hollywood, lots and lots of Jews in Hollywood. And I went, yeah, that's true. Just like there are lots and lots of basketball player, black basketball players. Yeah, but he also he also pointed out about the, that Adidas used to be in that, uh, uh, owned by the Nazis. So you know, it was, <laughs> yeah. it, it was it was pretty, uh, you know. Yeah. So yeah. when you're told by them that you're being anti-Semitic, you're anti-Semitic. But I, I just I got so upset by the fact that you know I mean I'm a Jew and I'm proud of being a Jew and. I don't mind being a Jew, and I like my representatives to act decently. And I just thought that was so stupid to go after him. You know, uh, it was so predictable. What's the guy at the AD, JDL trying to do? Keep his job? Is that what he was trying to do? Well, I think I think people are a little sensitive at the moment uh, in the Jewish community. Their 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 uh, their antenna is uh, are, are kind of high these days for reason. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, but I thought it was just very funny. Uh, just uh, you know, and uh, I, I, I didn't disagree with any of it at all. So, anybody have any disagreement with it, or did you feel the same way I did that when he was doing it, he was going to hear about it? Well, Alex, uh, as a Mexican American, I thought uh, he was being as cautious as he could not to offend anybody. You could tell it was like pretty painful for him to control the situation during the whole show. I think he did a pretty good job. I, I think, uh, you know, he tried to do something balanced, but 
I, I have to agree with with uh, the the person who was talking before that everybody's sensitized, but I think the people that are sensitized the most are the ones that don't belong to the group being assaulted. Yeah. I mean, you're looking out for the Jews these days, and, and you don't like it when they don't get a fair shake. I think that might be more, uh, you know, uh, of a of a uh, of a force sometimes than Jewish people. Uh, you're looking out for themselves. It, it, it's all that politically correct stuff that comes back to bite us every once in a while. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I just, I just felt that uh, there was nothing wrong with what he was saying. A lot of yeah. it rang true, you know. Uh, and and uh, he's a comedian for crying out loud. But what I like about him is he's a fearless comedian. You know, he takes the chance, he takes the risk. So we have to look around the room and make sure that it's okay to laugh. I mean, come on, it's ridiculous. Well, I mean, or that you should pull your punches. I mean, right. he, he is an observant. He's a, co a comedian who observes stuff, you know. Um, and what's funny is still funny. I'm sorry. I, I Maybe I'm a dinosaur, but, you know, I'll still laugh at Bobby Slayton. I'll still yeah. laugh at you know, those types of comedians. Yeah. I find it funny. So sue me. What, but, what, what did he refer to Herschel Walker as? He says, I'm, I'm not, uh, he's, uh, he goes, Herschel Walker is uh, um, uh, observable, observedly stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that was taking one for his own, too. I mean, you know, it, it was kind of self-effacing to see him do that. But it reminded me of something that I, I heard a while back ago when uh, Trump was in office. Uh, I guess they interviewed uh, uh, one of uh, President Reagan's media guys who would you know, be the public facing guy. And he said, well, you know, Republicans aren't racists, but it's amazing how many racists are Republicans. So, you know, <laughs> good line. It, it, it was one of those backhanded situations where, you, you know, you couldn't be right. You couldn't be wrong. Yeah. Yeah. But I just I, I, uh, I I've, I've known him briefly over the years. I mean, I've had him on my show and uh, Ursula Walker. Yeah, Herschel Walker. Sure. <laughs> the better, the, the better line though, Alex was the, the better. The better line of all of it was when he said he's the guy that has to kind of think before he plays tic tac toe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I had uh, I had him on the show years ago, and uh, I mean, he was always a he, he was a, a very good comedian, very good comedian, and brave and fearless and he doesn't let anybody tell him you can't say that you know he finds a way to say it hello shecky hello ben shecky was at his doctor's and didn't think he was going to make it today but you got home. Show you two arms full of uh, needle holes <laughs> what i said two arms that had been punctured <laughs> well i mean what did they do to you well they took blood they took blood a lot of blood, apparently. Yeah, a lot of blood. Yes. Uh, and is there? Does he think there's something wrong with you, or he just wanted to take blood? They love taking blood. You know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd love to. They walk into a doctor's office and they get the needles out. <laughs> uh, uh, Marjorie, in your lifetime, how many gallons of blood do you think you've given? <laughs> many, going, many. Going many, to doctors. Many. My wife actually keeps track of it when she goes because she donates blood, and I think she's on her fifth gallon, something like that. Wow. Yeah, really? it's really she got some pin and some recognition. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> wow. I, I figure that they, they don't actually take that blood and send it to a lab, they send it to a vampire somewhere who needs it. <laughs> yeah. And it's delicious. Yeah, and it's delicious. <laughs> I mean, I just uh uh and and uh uh, then, oh, oh, well, don't eat before you come in because we don't want the blood to get tainted with, like, uh, oh, I know, bacon, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Marjorie, well, Marjorie loves going to her doctor's. You know what I do? I wake up in the morning and she's not here. So I go to her calendar and I go to see what doctor is she visiting today? <laughs> it isn't her doctor's. It's getting her nails done. That's <laughs> it, you know. Well, the doctor's keeper looking great, so maybe it right. works. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. But uh, well, now your doctor will keep you looking great, right? Well, I don't know about that. So. <laughs> this is the guy that kept sending you back and back and back to get uh, 
Well, today was we had to schedule an MRI on the abdomen. Okay, fine. Oh, really? I I won't do an MRI. You know, they got to do it. They got to do a CT scan with me. That's it. I will. I rather drop dead than do an MRI. Really? Yeah, yeah. I I have a great fear of MRIs. I just you know. You don't like the tube. I the tube. The the I'm I'm very very. Mm. Um, claustrophobic. Well, I, oh, I I was what was a perceivable claustrophobic for years, in which I never ever had a situation where I had to worry about it. Okay, uh, but I always thought if I'm I can't stand to be put into something like that and whatever, so I was afraid of that. Then one day I'm in where I'm in Greece with a a, a ex girlfriend and. Uh, we were going to go into these underground tunnels mm. that were there that led from like one town to the next. It was they were used, uh, I don't know, in the P- Peloponnesian Wars. I don't know. Muggle drugs, huh? Muggle drugs. Muggle drugs. <laughs> Muggle, smuggle drugs. Yeah. But so she says, "Well, come on, let's go." And so we went down the stairs, and then there's this sm- area that's about was about like I don't know. 20 feet, 40 feet, something like that, that was just this wide. And you'd have to crawl through it sideways Mm. to get to the other end. And I'm going, I can't do that. I couldn't do it. Mm. I, she said, come on. And I'm going, I I can't, I, I I tried, you know, I, I, and I just couldn't. And it was at that point I knew that I definitely had claustrophobia. So if I couldn't do that, think about an mri you know so i mean there are open mris and i suppose they can send you out for an open mri in which you sit somewhere and vertical ones yeah yeah and they do that you know but uh i'm sorry you're not getting me in an mri in the regular mri but i mean i can do the i can do the uh, the ct scan because i can see my feet on the other side you know and my head's usually out on the other end so i don't feel that if i get a little close to that tube mm-hmm. i get a little you know but i it, it i don't have troubles with mris so that's that but uh so uh, well uh, you know you know what i i want to mention today and it's it's occurring a lot lately about three major companies have let off in excess of 10,000 of their employees. Oh, yeah. Uh, Meta, which is Facebook, uh, let off 20,000. Yep. Okay. Uh, of course, Twitter, I think it was 11,000, 12,000, something like that. Mm-hmm. Right. And then Google, or Amazon, rather, is letting off something like 10,000 people. Amazon? Yeah. Yeah, probably the IT side, but yeah, probably on the VIP side, not on the delivery side. But yeah. you know, but nevertheless, when I look at this, it always bothers me that these companies let go of people. You know, when in fact it's not the people's fault; it's the people who are running the company's fault. Yep. You know, and and I think the last thing you do is lay people off. You, you, but then again, you don't go crazy hiring them either yes uh, vernon the straw that broke the camel's back as far as twitter as far as me terminating my my account or postponing suspending whatever you want to call it was <clears throat> since elon musk has taken over i've tried to put some posts some replies into you know people like mitch mcconnell or uh, that guy down in in florida who calls himself a senator and they would not let me post F apostrophe ing. Huh. They wouldn't let you do F no. apostrophe. Yeah, I wanted to post your effing moron. They would not let me post that. I didn't know you couldn't use words like fucking on on uh, on. Uh, no. yeah. they, had, they had the they had the the the, the uh, uh, algorithm set up at least on my account. I said, okay, that's it. Goodbye. Huh. So you can tell. So you can tell any lie, any outrageous conspiracy <laughs> theory, anything that you want, but you can't use a, a an obscenity. Well, weren't you on some list or something? 
<laughs> Vernon. I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so. You Didn't know, you say Twitter had canceled you for a while or something? Was it you? No, no, no. No, no, no. It was Facebook. I had a Facebook account that I had suspended, but I hadn't gotten rid of it. But I hadn't logged in in well over a year. And when I tried to go back and log in, it said, who are you? <laughs> mm, I see. I had, I'd have to send them my dri- a copy of my driver's license and everything to to reacquire my... Well, whatever you had to say no, to Facebook, no. you may as well say right now, because this is going no. out over Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> but, when, but when that came back like that, I said, no, nah, no thanks. I can do without it. Really? Really? Let's see if we're still on it. I, I, right. <laughs> right on CompuServe or Prodigy. They don't, they don't tend oh, to... They, oh, they so said here that they're not running the program today because Vernon's on it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to move over to MySpace. Yeah. What do you what do you guys think about this whole idea that you know? I think that if you're going to run a social media thing, you're going to call it "Write Stuff You Feel," right? That there should be no censorship going on. I agree. There should be an open forum. Period. And I don't care. I mean, I'm one of these people who said, "So what if Trump's on Twitter? What's the big harm in that?" You know. We all know what he's about. Even the people who love him know what he's about. But you don't draw the line at somebody inciting violence over social media that they should be stopped? If they go, if out, they, go they out and encourage, kill some if they group? encourage people getting hurt, yes. Okay. I, but the question is, it's a fine line. I mean, has Trump actually, he may have done stuff which caused people to get hurt, but he didn't advocate people getting hurt. Yes, he does. He told his audience to go smack the guy over the head and I'll I'll bail you out of jail. Well, no, that was in a speech that he gave. That was in a speech he gave, not a tweet, not a Facebook post. It was live. He did it live to a a person in the audience. Yeah. He said, go beat that guy up. I'll I'll take care of your... uh, your, I'll pay your legal fees. Yeah, sure he will. He can't even pay his own legal fees. (laughs) What are you kidding me? I I heard a rumor that Trump guy is not a very good guy. Uh, that's what I. <laughs> the best joke I heard, I heard recently. <laughs> best joke I heard recently about Trump was, uh, if somebody is going to uh, do something against him, he says, "I'm going to sue your butt." Just as soon as my lawyer gets out of law school, gets <laughs> <laughs> out of jail. <laughs> you know, you know, it, you know it was was the comment that uh, that uh, Chappelle made about the fact that the people who created Adidas. Uh, were Nazis, yep. members yep. of the Nazi party. Uh, I've I didn't heard that about know that. AT&T also. Huh? I've heard that about the current AT&T also. Well, no, AT&T, I think what you're mixing it up with is IBM was involved in the Holocaust. Yeah. And they were involved in the Holocaust because they were supplying the Germans with the technology to be able to keep track of the people yep. who were in the concentration camps. Um. Also, um, um, Dude, Hugo, Mercedes, Hugo Mercedes, Boss. Mercedes Benz and, and uh, Volkswagen. Yeah, but yeah. they were German. American German. Company. IBM was an American company that was doing business with Nazi Germany to give them the technology to keep track of the people who were in the concentration camps. Wasn't, wasn't it Hugo Boss that designed all the Nazi uniforms? Oh, God. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Really, I I don't. I was, that wasn't me being funny. Well, wow. <laughs> look, I imagine there were companies back then who were doing business with Hitler because they wanted to do business with Germany and make a lot of money doing that, right? But once you knew who Hitler was and what he was doing, how somebody like IBM could continue to send him these punch cards and and sell them the technology. Uh, is, uh, you know, but they were the, I don't think it was AT&T. I think AT&T was just, you know, it was, it was Al- IBM. But, it was yeah, it was Alexander it was Graham Bell was like AT&T, you know. Yeah. It says here, Hugo Boss was an active member of the Nazi party for, from 1931 to the end of the, and designed the the, the clothing wow. and uniforms of the Nazis. Yeah. Yeah, but that doesn't wasn't making that up. Does that mean Hugo Boss today is a Nazi? Hugo Boss is dead. <laughs> oh, he, he he tied one of his bow ties a little too tight, I think. Yeah, well, let's see. So I can't find erotic I, can't find, I, I hope Skechers aren't Nazis. 
you know, because I like their shoes. No, I understand that's a Jewish company. I know that it's was, a very, it's was, a very, it was a very Jewish company. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I don't think it's on the stock market. As a matter of fact, I think it is actually wholly owned by a Jewish family. I can't remember their name now. Um, but that was one of the places that Kanye went to, and they <laughs> threw threw him out. You know, uh, but. Uh, so anyway, so uh, uh, so Shecky uh, went to the doctor today. Marjorie went to her pulmonologist, or to a pulmonologist. First time to this pulmonologist, right? Yeah. Did you like him? Her. She was her? very nice. Very nice. Very nice? Oh, okay. Um, okay. So. Um, you got lung problems? I had breathing issues after COVID. And um, this is to show you how long it took to make an appointment. My um, internist is also a cardiologist. So he checked me out for the heart because after effects are usually heart and lung. Mm -hmm. But he wanted me to get my lungs checked out. And it took me this long to get an wow. appointment because Dude. so many people have had after effects with COVID. It was like three months, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And Marjorie is nudging me to go see it. Uh, um, um, the pulmonologist. So, <clears throat> you know. Are you having the same symptoms? No, I've been. You know what it is, and who was it? Uh, it was Bubbles. <laughs> it was Bub No, it was Bubbles. No, it was Bubbles who uh, Bubbles Brown who does my show. Who figure this out? Maybe they're doing all this work on our courtyard right now. Yeah. They're drilling between all the bricks. Two and, years. Two and, years. And supposedly that gives off silica. Okay. Yes. Yeah. It's been going on for two years. And I, I felt that I was getting short of breath and that, but you know, whatever. And he said, it's probably all this stuff they're doing in the, the all the work they're doing. You know, because I mean, it, it just seeps into the apartment. Well, you live in a hundred-year-old apartment. There could be asbestos in there. Who knows what's going on? Well, I, I, you know, and I am, I, I had asthma as a kid, so you know, it only goes to show that, you know, it, it feels a little bit like I had I have asthma again, you know, but I'm not coughing. I coughed in the middle of the night last night for some reason. I don't know why, but under normal conditions, I'm not even coughing. But I rather than go to a doctor, Alex goes on the computer. You know something? You know something? Wait, find out everything hold, about his hold on a second. Hold on a second, Marjorie. I told our GP, okay, our our primary care physician, they're called now. PCP. Our internist. Yeah. Uh about that. I said that I, I get a lot of my information by going online. And he said, not a good bad place to find out about medicine. You told me. That. Huh? WebMD. Yeah. I you, most people are going there first. <laughs> yeah. He said it's not a bad Don't, don't tell him that. Don't tell him that. <laughs> don't really. encourage him. Yes. <laughs> Alex, you should try drbombay.com. You go to a doctor <laughs> almost. You go to a doctor. <laughs> you go to a doctor almost every day. Okay. And and uh, so I look it up on, on, uh, on uh, WebMD. So. You know, but I, you know, no, you can find, you can find a lot of medical stuff that's not wrong and you have to look at the source. If you go to the Mayo Clinic site, for instance, it's not going to have misinformation, you know, so whatever. So, and Shecky's very quiet today. I, I got I nothing think, to say. No, I think it's that you've been punctured too much today. Yeah. Well. <laughs> How many, how many different shots did they? They did the right arm. They tried to do the left arm. They did a couple of vials up here. And then they couldn't do, finish it, so they finished down here. So, You know what I do is I always tell them, see, I have trouble with getting, getting blood drawn because they can't find a vein. Uh, you know, I mean, sometimes they find it finally. But I always tell them, go through my hand. This is where all my veins show up. You know, yeah, I mean, but these veins right here, according to a doctor, they wiggle around. 
So yeah. it's hard to put a, new, a needle in there. Yeah, but they, you know what they did when they, when I had to have intravenous stuff, when I went in for my kidney stone, that's where they did it because I told them that was the best place to put it. Yeah, but a lot of times the vein wiggles around and they don't always get a good. Yeah. Visual. Yes, uh, Charlie. Every time I've been in the hospital for my 13 different surgeries, they've always got hooked up the IV to my my veins in my hand instead of my arm because it's so hard to get the find the veins. Yeah, in my arm. yeah I, I have trouble. They have trouble finding my veins, and they they say the vein in the arm up here collapsed, so that's why they did yeah. a second version down here. Yeah, yeah. See. Um, it, 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 uh, I'm always impressed by a nurse who comes in, says, I'm going to draw blood. And I went, you know, I have problems with the vein. And she taps it a couple of, finds the vein. Yeah. I'm amazed. But most of them don't. Yeah, most of them have a, a real problem with that. So, you know. Is Seraphin still there? Or you just got your camera off? He's no. Muted too. Huh? He's muted. Just, just oh, he off, uh, that's, that's, I'm using my phone, so I had to put it down. Uh, oh, I see. Okay, yeah, that's it's a pain in the ass. Yes. Holding it up like that, yeah. Right. Like Shecky has an iPad, Marjorie has an iPad, and I can tell that Andrew right. has, uh, has just a computer he's doing this on. And Mandy, that is, I think that's an iPhone, but you rest it up against something. <laughs> Yeah, I have it on um, like a little block, like the whole post-its, yeah, yeah. Um, because I have the two monitors, but because I'm working while we're, I have a Zoom camera and everything, but it takes away one of my monitors and I can't really work. Yeah, and, and, and Paula, I'm sure, is using a, uh, a computer, right? And iMac, yep. And I'm at, right? See, because really rock solid. Charlie, I can't figure out, is that a... Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a desktop PC, yeah. Desktop PC, Len LaFrisco, desktop PC. Uh, I think, I see, um, uh, how about you, um, uh, Vernon, I think is desktop PC or portable. Laptop. 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 I'm running through OBS. E Edward Berger is using a Dixie cup and a string. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> And Charlene is using, I think, using something like an iPad or an iPad. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. I can tell. I can tell. I'm just, You're I'm so a real smart. Pro. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm pro. Bubbles though. would be using a, a Dixie. <laughs> <laughs> and my friend Bubbles is so, you know, I said, hey, I'll send you a phone. I have some old iPhones. I'll send you a phone. No, I want one of those. I He likes a flip phone. <laughs> Jeez. And when they fi finally, what happened was, is the, the phone company said, we're changing our system and the old system is not going to work. So it won't work with your flip phone. So go down to your local AT&T or whoever the place is and pick up a phone on us. Really? Uh, so he went down to pick up the phone. He did it at a place that was owned by a friend. And uh, the guy comes out with, you know, like an iPhone. And he says, no, do you have any flip phones that will work with this new system? And they said, well, we have a couple of old ones in the back room that work with the new system. He said, get me that. And he's got a, he's got a flip phone again. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, Marjorie, your hair looks pretty today, by the way. Thank you. I know. I was going to say the same thing. You look beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much. She had to go to the doctor. So she does the hair, hair for the doctor. <laughs> she never does her hair for me, just saying I'm like my husband. <laughs> Be happy. <laughs> I had an appointment. Yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway, so yeah. Anybody have anything to report in your lives? It's it's interesting. Yes, man. Oh, her house. I bet. Well, I went today to pay the uh, for the permit for that shed I had built because they sent me a nasty gram. Oh so boy. I get a permit because I live in the city limits of this town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to be much more complicated than that. I have to get a drawing. I have to get drawings. I have to get measurements. I have to get, you know, setback, setbacks okay. or easement. Yeah. Really, I built a shed. I mean, it's like something you can even buy at Home Depot. 
but I just happened to have it built because we were thinking that I wouldn't be able to get it through my yard. So if you bought one at, at Home Depot, that would be okay. Well, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't think so. I think yeah. you still have to do all the what she was talking about, even if you buy it from uh, Home Depot. Yeah. I just could have been approved. But the I real, I, I the real question is who, who turned you in? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I was going to say, I met my neighbor and she's a kindly dear woman. She's been living there the whole time since 1965. But I don't oh. think she's in. I think they just have people driving around. And we live on the a road just right outside of the downtown area of this town. But it was just ironic because when I met her yesterday, she was telling me, complaining about the neighbor on the other side of her mm -hmm. who puts all the crap in his backyard. And she's called, you know, she's reported him to the city. Oh, and, and oh and Mandy, said, beware. It's so cute. Your shed is so cute. And I said, thanks. And I'm thinking, well, gosh, if they're not going to let me have the shed, I'll just to sell it or something. And then I'll just put a piece of wood down, put all my crap out there and put a tarp over it. And I'll just <laughs> yeah. put my crap out there. I'm sitting there trying to like have a nice little shed. I mean, it's white with a little red roof. It's very cute. Oh, ah, that that's adorable. Anywhere, anyway. Mandy. And so what, so what kind of, what kind of, in thing. other words, what kind of requirements do you have to meet in order to put this she called it last time a she shed. Yeah, it's like front and back application of stuff. So my I had guess to call, is, I had to call my guess is, built it. My what? guess is you have to know somebody. That's my guess. Yeah. Hey, well, it's, just, it's just a tax. They want money. Exactly. Yeah. That's what it is. I, I talked to the contractor. He said, I, I got an engineer doing some stuff for you, but it's basically a tax. It's $25. Right. Yeah. But I have to jump you, to do you have the survey from when you bought the house, Mandy? I was get, I that's another long story. I didn't get a survey because there hasn't the the guy that does surveys that I called, he couldn't find one. One hadn't done it. It was he said, I, I have to charge you a lot of money to do some digging to find one. Because the house was oh. built in 1966. To find the to find the pylons underground for the with the metal detectors. Yeah. Oh. Usually there's there's sta yeah. there's stakes that were put in the ground and you just hit a metal detector, you find them and you remark it. Yeah. It, at least the building they built is portable. So if they had to shift it over, but I like where it's at, you know. Yeah. It, it's like when I was complaining to my friend about this, who was a conservative, mind you. <laughs> um, he said, Well, that's what you get, you know, big government. That's what yeah. you get. <laughs> oh wow. Here we go. Here we go. No, this isn't big government. This is stupid government. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, um, if there was a reason behind it. Yes. You know, if there was a real reason, like for your well-being and the health of your neighbors and so on and so forth. It has to do with fire stuff. They don't want it too close to the buildings or too close to the fence. If something starts on fire. But, it's more about it's more about not ruining property value. Somebody builds a shed out of garbage and. Right. And. I mean, I understand that they have ordinances that they, you know, want to keep the town nice. But when you said that about you got to know somebody, it's funny you say that because my financial advisor, when we were just chatting and I was letting him out, I'm buying a house. He's like, oh, great. I was telling him where it was. And he goes, oh, one of my best friends is the mayor there. <laughs> there you go. You're so, right. Holy crap. I'm going to call him up and There's, say, hey. Yeah. Yeah. I would do that. Do it. Is there a homeowners Ooh, association? No, it's just on a road. It's oh, you know, good. This is to make it worse. This is just a local regulation, you know. And she's got to fill that out, give them twenty five bucks, and then then you can build it. Or do they then have to come no, in? I've already had it built. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, but here's the thing, she said. I said, okay, I'll just pay you the money, and she said, oh, not so fast. It's very complicated. Like, I guess they got to justify their jobs or something. It's very complicated. Yeah. I was like, how so? It's a shed to hold a lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, you need to fill all this out. And she, you know, highlighted areas and you yeah, need to get this bro. and that drawings and renderings. And what, what, what compelled you to even talk to them in the first place? Because I got a letter 
like a, a thing that said oh. courtesy notice you're in violation you don't have a building permit yep. for that building that we see this being built because that you you could see it being built over okay the last so it's the years. neighbor it's the neighbor next door no they drive oh. around there's an officer officer Mandy, wait a minute where this where was in your backyard neighbor? right yeah but you can see it you can see it there's what no you say marjorie I said, beware the neighbor next door. I agree, Marjorie. That's the beginning. I'm telling you, it's you can just see. the beginning. My neighbor is really sweet. She really is. She you really watch. Is. You <laughs> watch. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, it, it's like I watch walked better. Like we were in the yard. And I walked up to her. I was like, nice to meet you finally. Yes, you too. And then she said, I have stage four cirrhosis of the liver. <laughs> <laughs> She's an alcoholic. Oh, jeez. Like, first thing she told me. Stage four, is, is, there, is there such a thing as stage four? Yeah, I guess so. I guess I had never smoked or drank, she said. Like, okay, I'm sorry. I never smoked or drank, but I got cirrhosis of the liver. <laughs> well, she she should have drank. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And also, I got out of jury duty today. Well, you got what? I got out of jury duty. Day. Oh, and, 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 wait a minute wait a minute let's hear how she decided not to li live her do her civic duty no i actually didn't have to do anything i was supposed to report at noon and i came to the office because we had a potluck for thanksgiving mm -hmm. and i was going to participate in that and then go to jury duty and they texted me i opted in for the text notifications mm -hmm. so they texted and said you don't need to come so nice. all right i was glad so you so you you've satisfied your civil duty and they don't have to call you for a while. They even oh, said thank you for serving. Like I didn't do anything, but okay. Yeah, they did. They I went and I you know I I tried to, uh, well I went to it you know, with uh, Steven Soderbergh. Believe it or not, was one of those <laughs> other potential jurors, and uh, and I've told that story before, so I won't tell it here. Uh, and and I went to it and I, I got out of it because I just said that I didn't believe that any drug should be uh, illegal. And the judge went, OK, next. You know, and of course, Sturberg <laughs> looked at me and said, boy, that's a flimsy excuse to get out of it. And I said, well, what yours was that you had to make a movie in Cuba for crying out loud, you know, and you're blaming me. So anyway, so I didn't have to do it. Well, three years later, I get another one that says you got to serve again. You know, don't ever let them start telling you to serve because, you know. And I got this thing that said you got it. So I looked it all up and I, and I had already turned 75. And in 75, you don't have to serve anymore. Yep. Why are they sending me this thing? They know I am. Yeah. They're just trying to be a pain in the ass. Yeah. Well, it's so funny. You're sitting there talking about that. I get a text from my brother. He must have heard me talking about it. Did you have to serve on jury duty? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, you know, I guess, you know, I, somebody once said to me that, that probably if you're asked to serve on jury duty, you should do it. And the reason you should do it is if you don't do it, then you're wondering why nothing but old people are on juries and they don't make the best juries. Yes, Charlie. Yeah, uh, and Texas is 70. Anybody over 70 doesn't have to do it. Oh, they still send me the, ju the, the jury do it. I just, I just respond to it that I'm over 70 years old. And they say, okay, thanks. Bye. Yeah, I never heard from him again once I said that I was, uh, you know, I was 75. I think maybe I was 76 or something. Oh, uh, but I didn't, didn't want to have to. You know, the worst part about it wasn't that I had to serve on a jury. That would have been a piece of cake, but sitting there in that waiting room all day, all day, all you day. know. Yep. Well, I That's got six dollars cool. for sitting there last time I did it. <laughs> I don't think they pay a penny. Eight dollars. Jackie, have you ever served? I've gone through voir dire, and they send me home once I say I read the Post, the Daily News, the Washington yeah. Post, the Wall Street Journal, whatever, and. <laughs> They were like, bye, nice knowing you. You know nice. too much. I mean, your excuse was reading? <laughs> Being a well-informed yeah, citizen. Yeah, yeah you would think. Said when they asked me, what do you read? Well, you would think that they would want somebody like you, that somebody who read and was up on what was happening and so on and so No, on. I had figured out in advance what the case was. That well, didn't help. What was the case? Uh, 
I, I'll be quite honest with you, I can't remember now. <laughs> but it was someone who couldn't speak English, had a translator, and blah, blah, blah. And I immediately like A plus B plus C. <laughs> okay, that's why, you know. Well, the one they tried to get, the jury they tried to get me on was a guy who, who was be up there for selling drugs. Mm -hmm. uh, I think maybe it's cocaine or whatever. And I just told the judge, is there any reason why you shouldn't be on this jury? And I said, I don't believe that drugs should be a criminal offense. I believe they're a medical problem. And he said, next. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that, that is the way I feel, you know. Uh, and I could not find a guy guilty of selling drugs. I'm sorry. It's just, you know, it's not my DNA. Yeah, that, that, not, if, guess, what? What? what I, say, I, I got the same deal. They, the minute that I told him I had a master's degree in astrophysics, I got kicked off of every jury. I got <laughs> this is what I don't get. No, they want dumb people. Shecky, yeah. Shecky reads, you're an astrophysicist. <laughs> okay. A rocket scientist, if you will have it, okay? And neither of you are good enough for jury? Well, to one of the sides, you're too good. Yeah. You know, you're right. not good enough. You're too, you know, you're not, you're going to convict my client because you're too smart. Paul, yeah. Paul, have you ever done jury duty? I got close and I, I had the same problem. Uh, you start telling your background, they say, thank you very much. But I did, but and, and dismiss me, but... Um, I did stay long enough uh, to, to see the people that were actually in panel. And the, I thought that uh, the process was really interesting you know, because I watched people get- I started. would imagine by what you've told me that they just, if you had 12 of them on there, they all looked like Herschel Walker. <laughs> it wasn't that, no, it wasn't that bad. But, but, uh, but they, uh, um, I got to see people get serious about about what I think it was a murder trial too uh, in Philadelphia, and uh, um, it was almost like a scene out of the verdict, you know, like where where people kind of shaped up uh, when they got impaneled. So I remember that, but I well, didn't. People start. take it seriously. I yeah, think. yeah. I was an alternate. Seraphin, have you ever done jury duty? Gotta wait for yeah. No. I've, I've been in that long salon of uh, waiting to see if I got picked or not, but never, never had the service so far. But did you have to go down there and sit down there and read? Yeah, yeah just, just once. And, and uh, you know, I probably wouldn't have been put on the jury anyway. It was a, somebody ripped off a car from a rental car lot and it looked more like, like a big mix up as to where the keys were, where the park, the car wasn't parked where it was supposed to. And I'd been through that many times and being, a traveler myself for business so you know i wouldn't have been, i would have asked to be recused but yeah it was a whole lot of people there and, and they were very selective and it was in palo alto so it was an interesting situation wow wow yeah, well, yeah it pretty much, I, pretty much, pretty much, I talked about it before but i was on a case six years ago a kidnap uh, but it was domestic yeah uh, they, they, they kidnapped a kid or something well it was the it was like a boyfriend and girlfriend and he had already pled guilty to beating her. So he, wow. you know, but they tried to try him with kidnapping, but she basically testified that she got in the car willingly. So we had to find him not guilty of that, but you know, that was like 25 years, but I mean, he was a piece of crap. He was going to, he needed to go to jail, but he wasn't guilty of kidnapping. Well, yeah. yeah. If she said she went yeah. willingly. But that was like six years ago. So they said in Georgia, apparently you don't, or at least in my county, you don't get called again for at least five years if you serve. I like remember that. in California, it used to, used to get in the old days, you get the death penalty for kidnapping. Really? Yeah. Yeah. There was a guy by the name of Carol Chessman, who's known as the red light bandit. And he was found guilty of, uh, of, of uh, robbing a couple. Um, and because he moved them from here over to there. It was considered kidnapping. Wow. And he died in the death chamber in California. Dang. Wow. wow. Yeah. You remember the Chachilla kidnapping of the kids in the school bus? Mm -hmm. You remember that? that yeah. was, the guy buried the bus, didn't he? Mm -hmm. The bus was buried about three miles from where we live right here in Livermore. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he buried the bus with the kids in it? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh that's and they, they, they did get out. They found them after, what, a week or something? I forget what uh, it was. Were they alive? I'm trying yeah, to yeah. They were. Mm -hmm. And they were, uh, 
they they were a, a couple of families from Portola Valley. My dad was a landscaper. He used to do jobs for them every once in a while. But these were really rich kids. A couple of brothers, I think, and a, and a friend who plotted it all. But they were from well-to-do families. So it was the stupidest thing I ever heard of. Wow. Uh, Charlene's got her hand up. Oh, I was just going to say my neighbor was one of the um, firemen that found them. Wow. Oh. Yeah. So the maybe you all, then. it sounds like you all had something to do with this particular <laughs> <kid man>. <laughs> <laughs> Very suspicious. <laughs> that was how many years ago, though? I seem to remember oh, that. But long That's time. The 70s, I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. A while ago. Yeah, I uh, uh, uh and Marjorie, you've you've served you have you served on jury duty? Yeah. 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 What was the case? I was an alternate, but I had to sit through the whole trial. It was a burglary. And in, in New York, you could see people running across the tops of the of the buildings. You know what I would what I would find disgusting is being forced to go on a jury, and it was like uh, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Mm. Now, while it would be interesting to listen to, uh, what a useless case and what a useless time of 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 of, uh, of a court, you know? Yeah, and well, that's what my biggest fear was: was what if I get picked for something that lasts like a month or something? Mm -hmm. Like I have a job that's like super deadline oriented. I I don't know. I was just praying. I well, they would have your boss would have to deal with it. He can't fire you because oh, you're jury duty. I, yeah, we talked about it. I was just I was just nervous, you know that. So yeah. the that, Chow, that the thing was 1976. Wow. And they dug, dug their way wow. out of being underground for 16 hours. They they found their way out. Wow. Really? Wow. That's crazy. Wow. They found their way out? Yeah, they dug their way out from underneath. They were they moved them from a bus into a box truck and stuck them and, and buried them out at the quarries out here about three or four miles. Oh, oh, right. wow. Yeah. wow. They, they just let one of the um one of the guys out of jail. Oh, did they really? Mm -hmm. oh. oh yeah, parole 2022. You're absolutely right. Wow. Age 70 is granted a full parole. Wow. From okay. age 24 to age 70. Holy crap. Wow. Yeah, the, best, the best story is uh, what some of the kids had to say about the bus driver uh, in the aftermath of that whole thing. It, he was a hero. Was a real, he? Yeah, yeah it, was a, it was a real soap opera inside that truck as to what to do to get out. And they finally got out of some kind of vent that only the kids were big enough to get out of. Yeah. But apparently there was a lot of, you know, I guess... It reminds me of some of the stuff I've heard about Survivor, the TV show, you know, in terms of how the how the students were uh, taking it as opposed to the bus driver. First of all, first of all, though, how did they bury something that big? Yeah, and, that's what what I'm reading that? Right now. and what was their motivation? They had buried the truck, I think, prior to that, it looks like, and they got them in there. Kidnappers hid the bus and then a shallow, uh, let's see, uh, where the second van, they, they took, oh, so they took the bus put the kids into some vans, drove them here to Livermore, where there was a truck already buried in a quarry that they put them in, made them climb down a ladder, then they put dirt on top of it. With some mat they put some mattresses, some food and water in it. What was the motivation? What were they expecting to get out of this? Ought to be money, right? Ransom. Yeah, it must have helped help ransom, yeah. Who so said the guy got when the guy got paroled, did they put any restrictions? He's not allowed to do any gardening. <laughs> <laughs> Asking for a friend, I, I really don't care. <laughs> oh, 20, Twenty-six kids, twenty-six kids and one adult. Holy crap! I, I, the great case I would like to see get reopened just for the hell of it is the Frank Sinatra Jr. kidnapping case, <laughs> because that thing was very strange. I yeah. never. That was like the gang who couldn't shoot straight. <laughs> and you know that you remember Jan and Dean. Mm -hmm. duo. Yeah, singers, yeah. Do you know that one of them was involved in it? Manson. Huh? Manson, wasn't it? No, no, no. This was Manson. This was Jan and Dean. This was Yeah, uh, but wasn't Dean. he involved with Manson? It was it was uh, yeah, I think it was Dean Torrance who somehow was involved with those guys, knew about it, and he I think because he turned state's evidence, they never charged him with it. Wow. Wow. But uh yeah.
Old story, old, old story. Well, you know, we're coming down to the, the home stretch here. What a nice day today, you know? Always nice talking to all of you. Nice talking to you, Charlene. Thank you. Yeah, and always nice talking to you, uh, uh, astrophysicist uh, hey, uh, Charlie Wallace, the smartest Charlie, guy in the in the room. What is that? The, is that the next solar eclipse? By the way, yep, the April eighth, twenty twenty four. It'll be cool. visible in Austin. Oh, it's uh, going to come through Austin. No shit. Yeah. Oh wow! It, by the way, did you see the one the other night? That, that was a eclipse. eclipse. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, let me see here. Uh, Lynn LaFrisco, thank you so much. Uh, Vernon Nunn, love having you here as always. Paula Levin, you know, I, what can I say? We love Paula. Andrew Deutsch, always nice when you show up. It's uh, kind of a treat today. Uh, and Mandy O'Brien, of course, the proud new homeowner of not only a home, but a shed. Yeah. <laughs> Which, at least it might, for this might week. have to go away. We'll see. Do you have yeah. to tear it down now? No, I, I doubt it. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. I'm a pull a tarp. Just throw a tarp over it. Right. <laughs> what do you say? Yeah, put just a tarp, a tarp over. over it. Yeah, really. Yeah. No, I'm just going to paint. Very, pay, very pay a bus out there. Biden 2024 on the front of it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marjorie Miller, thank you very much. Did you finally were able to order dinner? Yeah, do you know how long it took? <laughs> uh, Who did you go through? I had to go through um, uh, Uber Eats. Yeah. Oh, good. I th I thought we could get through our life without ever having to use Uber. Yeah. Rick Shackman, thank you always, Shacky. I appreciate it. Seraphin Costello, uh, Castillo. Thank you, Alex. Hey, yeah, I Seraphin and Costello. What? Hey, uh, Alex, the holidays are on my mind. I'm just wondering, have you uh, even used last year's Christmas gift to you yet? Uh -oh. I don't know what to get you for this year. What did you send me last year? I'm trying to remember. It was, it was that, that uh, in the cloud uh, VCR, the play on cloud stuff. Yeah, no, I didn't there? because I have other, I have so much cloud stuff. Okay, because, well, you know, if, since you're a Hulu subscriber, so am I. If you put stuff in my stuff, you know, all the shows you want to track in that my stuff area. Yeah. You can record them on Play TV for less than 25 cents. And I gave you uh, several hundred credits. So you got a lot of recording. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a try. I'll Check give it, it out. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Seraphin. I appreciate it. And what of do course, I get you this Christmas? Of course, we'll finish <laughs> off, <laughs> finish off <laughs> with our old friend, um, uh, Edward Berger. Who says that's all folks <laughs> bye bye everybody thanks for joining thanks, us. okay bye bye